Well, we begin this morning with the news that shook Illinois politics from Chicago to Springfield. Former Speaker of the Illinois House, often referred to as the more powerful than even the governor guy, Mike Madigan, was indicted on Wednesday. Federal prosecutors accused Madigan of essentially running a criminal enterprise that existed to enhance his political power and financial well-being. Once considered untouchable by some, he now faces 22 counts of racketeering, conspiracy, and bribery charges. As alleged in the indictment, Madigan and McLean unlawfully requested that various companies and interests uh, with interest in state legislation, including utility company Commonwealth Edison, pay Madigan's associates uh, as a reward for their loyalty to Madigan at times in return for performing little to no legitimate work for those businesses. The depth of this corruption that's alleged in the indictment is truly breathtaking. And spent, Madigan spent 36 years as Speaker of the Illinois House and half a century in office. The indictment, the culmination of an investigation dating back to 2011. The FBI began carrying out raids on various Madigan allies in 2019. It wasn't until July of 2020 that ComEd would pay a $200 million fine as part of a deferred prosecution agreement. And that's when Madigan was labeled Public Official A by prosecutors. That November, Madigan confidant Mike McLean, two former ComEd executives and the former head of the City Club of Chicago were all charged in the matter. Facing increasing pressure from the public and members of his own party, Madigan resigned from his positions as the state, at the State House and leading the Democratic Party by February of last year. Even now, the former Speaker maintains his innocence. He's set to be arraigned on Wednesday through a court hearing that takes place over the phone. One year after Madigan stepped out of the Speaker's chair and resigned from the legislature, Democrats are still trying to figure out what the future Future inside the state house looks like. Some, including now Speaker Chris Welch, say change is already happening. Others say we still got a long way to go. 106 pages of um, alleged illegal behavior, and um, that's beyond what anything we could pass in the law. We need to make sure that what is addressed in there never happens again. We need a massive sea change, and if something like this doesn't wake everybody up and put everybody on the right path, time is going to go by, and budgets are going to be passed, and new legislators are going to come in, and people are going to forget, and the same thing that happened before is going to happen again. It's important to focus on the work that this legislature is doing under new leadership, and part of my job is to make sure we get out there and, and show the people of this great state that it is a new day in Springfield and, and uh, that they can believe in the work that we're doing here today. Last year, the governor approved a package of ethics reforms, including a six-month ban on lawmakers immediately becoming lobbyists after they leave office and term limits on the leadership positions like House Speaker. Both parties say they'll be working on more reforms this year. I guess this morning literally wrote the book on the former speaker, the house that Madigan built, the record run of Illinois' Velvet Hammer. It's out on bookshelves May, uh, sorry, March 22nd. Author and veteran Chicago Tribune reporter Ray Long joins me to talk about the indictment that shocked many, but surprised very few this week. Ray, I don't leave home without your book. Thanks for getting me an early copy. Congratulations on this. And let me start by saying you've been covering Madigan since 1981. Your book comes out now. Did you see this coming, or did you think, uh, because you studied him so long, this guy would stay above the law and never get indicted? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on here. Uh, I just want to say that a couple of years ago, it's been probably now three or four years ago, I was thinking, hey, you know, if anybody ought to have a book written about them, it's Mike Madigan. And then uh, I'm sitting at my desk at the Tribune, and an email comes in from the U of I press, and they suggested I write a book on Madigan. And I said, yes. And so I've been working on it for a while. And as I was building uh, up stories from all my experience in covering him, dating back to 1981 in Springfield, off and on over years and years, and uh, full time in Springfield many of those years, I was putting together this a group of stories and major events. I tried to tell people about his power by how it affected major events. Yeah, and then letting and, us letting us decide for ourselves. Um, but but let me ask you. So number one, did you see it coming? And number two, by the way, uh, U.S. Attorney John Lau says it's an ongoing investigation. So is there more to come right now? 
Well, uh, I wouldn't uh, count it out that there would be more to come because uh, of what he just said and what you just cited. The reality is that um, this grand jury has been working for a long time, and we were already reporting. Uh, we reported months ago that they were calling in ex-lawmakers to talk to them about how Madigan dealt with them in Springfield and how Springfield worked and asked for a bunch of details. The federal authorities were showing up at the homes of uh, former lawmakers. And so we knew that there was still something brewing out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, did I know it was happening? I didn't know any more than you. But the reality was we knew that the federal grand jury was still meeting. So, Ray, when you look at the book, by the way, it is not a biography of Madigan. As I said, I've read it, and it's basically a series of stories of moments. You make the point that you'll let us decide what we think. However, interestingly, the book opens with a foreword by journalist and professor Charles Wheeler, and he says Madigan always kept his words. He wanted to protect Chicago and its institution and safeguard the legislative branch from the executive branch. So you let us decide, and we'll get into your stories in just a moment of, you know, that are in the book, but why did you open with Wheeler making that point? Sounds like Madigan actually has was pure of heart. Well, Wheeler had covered him since 1969, um, and that's when the Illinois State Constitutional Convention met. And in fact, Wheeler had watched him the entire time. He just retired recently from uh, being the director of public affairs reporting at the University of Illinois at Springfield. So he had continued as a political analyst. And as a matter of fact, on Friday, I, I was uh, on uh, public radio station down there and Wheeler was another guest on the panel. So he has seen Madigan from the very inception of his time and his view of what Madigan had done in trying to protect those um, uh, institutions, the Chicago institutions, yep. as Charlie calls it, is very important perspective. And I thought it was important to have Wheeler's perspective in the book. Fair enough. Now, lots to ask you about, but because this is a series of stories, I just want you to tell one, but really quickly, because it's my favorite. And it's when um, he was able to do what, what Cher says people can't do. He turned back time when it came to saving the White Sox for Chicago. Can you give us a really brief tale for folks who don't remember? Yeah, this is the time that uh, it looked like the White Sox would were off to Florida. The, the, uh, it was grim. We were down to the final day in the legislative session in 1988. Thompson came into the building. Governor Thompson came into the building at 4 p.m. and said, said, looked around and said, holy smokes, why is so everybody so glum? And then they said, it looks like the White Sox are not going to happen. He said, no, I'm going to make this happen. He charged up to Senate Minority Leader Pete Phillips' office, brought in a bunch of Republicans. He said he needed it personally. They brought in the votes. Uh, Tim Dignan, then the senator from that Bridgeport area where the Sox right. Stadium was, stood up and said, you know, it's the last of the ninth. We need the votes. They got 30 in the Senate. 20 minutes was left on the clock when they, when they uh, went to the House and the the legislation was rolling. Thompson was in on one side of, of the aisle working the Republicans. Madigan was going desk to desk on the Democratic side. They didn't think they had the votes early on. But then when it came right down to the wire, um, it looked like they were past the midnight deadline. And that was critical because the, the session was going to end. But what, just very quickly, so what, what got said when this thing actually passed after midnight? Somebody goes, it's too late. Well, everybody said it was too late, like you said, but my, Jim McPike, the speaker in the chair, said, bam, at 11.59, the bill passes, and there you have it. And then the reporters ran up and got copies of the roll call, and it said 12.03, but then the speaker and Governor Thompson said no court in the land will overturn what the, the speaker said, and the speaker said 11.59, and no court overruled it. And so that's the answer. Look, the one question I've been asked on television, newspapers have been calling me, people want to know, is this indictment going to change anything in Springfield? So I'm using your book to help you answer that question in a couple of ways. Number one, redistricting. You talk about Madigan is the master of redistricting among the dem. Now, Chris Welch, the new speaker, he says, you know, it's a new day in Springfield, and yet you make it clear that uh, Welch has relied on some tactics that Mike Madigan mastered. So, is it a new day? Yes. Well, I, I think there's a lot that needs to be done in Springfield. Uh, redistricting, of course, is out of control across the nation, and uh, not only is it a, a, a 
uh, uh, problem here in in Illinois, where you have seen over the decades that they've just pulled, uh, literally pulled a name out of the hat to decide which uh, uh, party, Democrats or Republicans, should rule in the decades. Well, the Democrats won and they kept on going, and then now we have lopsided majorities here. So you may support the way it's going right now, and that's okay, but uh, there are questions as to whether the process itself is fair, and that's what uh, needs to be looked at further. Ray, again, congratulations on the book. So much to ask you, but so little time. So congratulations, Ray Long. The book, again, is The House That Madigan Built, The Record Run of Illinois' Velvet Hammer. It's out in bookstores online in just over two weeks, March 22nd. You'll want to read it. I did. Thank you, Ray. Thank you.